Kia ora. Uh, ko Janice Lee Taku uh, My name is Janice Lee. Uh, I am the um, uh, the founder and the project lead of an organisation called Kohakai. Uh, we operate out of Invercargill in Southland, um, and we work with people who have been marginalised and isolated um, by the fact that they live with the daily challenges of disability. Um, uh, we support them to learn new skills. Uh, we support them to learn life skills, uh, to create friendships and to become work ready. So we offer two vocational uh, pathways for people with disabilities, one of them being horticulture and the other being um, hospitality. Uh, but rather than doing it in a classroom school learning environment, uh, sort of mainstream, uh, we learn by doing and we do what we do right in the middle of community. So um, uh, we have community gardens, we put gardens in schools and then the produce that we grow, um, we channel through our hospitality program, which is also based in schools and we cook healthy, hearty, nutritious meals uh, lunch meals for children, uh, primarily in low decile schools, um, although realistically um, we would like to be in every school. Um, so uh, in line with our ethos of helping ourselves to help ourselves, um, uh, we sell those meals that we create uh, to the children in those schools uh, for just two dollars. This video log is about um, learning what it means to be uh, valued, valued in your community. So in 2013, I was working in the disability sector. I'd been working in the disability sector for some time. I was working as a support uh, person, uh, support worker. Uh, how it was promoted to me when I began working is we want to do ourselves out of a job. So we want to provide the people that we're working with with the skills that they need to become independent, to live independently in the community. Um, and we're going to give them all these skills and they're going to become stronger and more confident. And then effectively what we're going to do is do ourselves out of a job. That's the goal. So here I was working in this sector with this as our goal for some years. And in that time, I never saw one person gain more independence or leave services other than to go to a different service. And I thought, um, if this is our job, if this is what we're striving to achieve, then we're letting the side down because what I could see from the people that I was working with, they were becoming more reliant on me uh, and less likely to do for themselves. In other words, what we were doing was empowering them to become more reliant on us. So what happened um, this day, I was, um, you would do a block of support with one person and then you'd have a break while you drop them off and then you'd move on to the next. So I was working with this one lady and we were in doing some secondhand shopping. That was, that was her thing. She really enjoyed doing secondhand shopping. It was coming to the end of our, um, of our support time and I was thinking about the next person that I was going to be going on to. And, and, that, and in the second hand shop that we were visiting, I saw this item. Now, I can't even remember what it was. All I remember thinking was, hey, that's really cool. And this lady that I'm going to see next would love that because this is, this is the sort of thing that she loves. I'm going to get this. It's only $2. And I was so excited for my purchase. And so in due time, I, I rocked up to this lady's house and, and I went and there. I was so excited. And I said, look, I was just out, you know, doing support with such and such. And we're in the secondhand shop and I told her the big story. And I said, I saw this and I thought, oh, it's got your name on it. And I thought, I want to, I want to get this for you. Here you are. And she went, oh, thanks. Um, what time is support tomorrow? And I thought, whoa, way back. What's going on here? And then I thought, you know what, when you are a person who has spent your whole life with disability, someone who has been reliant on other people for every facet of their pra you know, practical life, and you, have, you know that you have to say thank you. So thank you for picking me up and taking me shopping. Thank you for taking me to the doctor. 
Thank you for picking up this for me. Thank you for helping me with my dishes. Thank you for the, helping me with what, whatever. You spend your whole life saying thank you because you know it's what you have to do. So it becomes, the, the word thank you has no meaning. It's as meaningful as a sigh or a yawn. It's something that happens automatically with no thought. And I thought, this is where it needs to start. This is where the change needs to happen because these people do not know the sense of value. So this is what we need to do. We need to find a way to teach them the sense of value. So it just happened at that time that I was the um, recreation officer for the organisation that I was working with. Now normally what recreation looked like was, okay guys, we're going uh, for a picnic to Seaward Downs Bush. I'll be there to pick you up at two o'clock. Um, be ready. And so you'd pick them up and you'd have a carful or you'd have a couple of carfuls and off you'd go to, to your outing and you would go for a walk and you would have a picnic, lovely time, blah, blah, and I'll drop you home. Um, at five o'clock where you go inside, you close the curtains, you turn your TV on and you've already forgotten most of what you did. Um, and so all that was was a window of entertainment with no real sense of value and realistically nothing of any kind of productive activity. Maybe a little bit about you know getting fitter or something like that but but there was there was no substance to it. And I thought that's where we need to start. So as a recreation officer, I arranged for us to um, to do some activities together. And what we did was we got this paper, fancy paper, pretty paper. And I, I taught them how to fold it all and make little origami boxes, kind of about that size. Um, just big enough to have four little truffles inside of it. So what that really looked like, because now remember here, we're talking about people who've got intellectual disabilities, people who've got mobility issues, people who who have never really had to do fine work before and I'm asking them to make these miniature um, origami boxes with lots of folds. So what they really looked like was I would pre-fold all the paper and then I'd thread it out and I'd say oh this is how you do it, fold it like this, da 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 da. And then when they left I would go back and fix it because you know you, that's what you do. Um, and <laughs> So over four weeks, we made all of these origami boxes, probably about 80 of them, yeah, whatever. Um, and then, uh, and every time they came and did this recreation activity with me, but four weeks was about as much as they could manage with before it was like, what the hell? So on the fourth week, they'd give their $2 to me every time they came. And, and on the fourth week, we went out and bought lollies. And so we went and got things like jersey creams or whatever didn't actually matter what it was and we cut them up to the size that we wanted and we dipped them in chocolate and made them look pretty and we put them into these little truffle containers and set them inside these boxes and then and, and they became the lollies that we'd made and then we um put them in cellophane bags and tied little ribbons around them and they just looked beautiful and and all this and so then the next week we put them into big baskets and we piled into the vans and we went round all of the old folks homes around Invercargill and Southland region. So we went out to Wyndham and out to Winton and um and and we gave them to the old folks in the home that was Valentine's Day in twenty thirteen. Um and so the guys were walking around and um they had invested the, themselves and their time and their energy into creating these um, these things, so it meant a lot to them. And then when we get, went to the old folks' homes, the people would greet them with smiles and conversations. And I remember one old lady sort of saying to some of the guys, like, you know, I'm not allowed lollies because I've got diabetes, but they're so beautiful and I really want them. And so um, I'm going to tell the nurses, now you be careful that you don't, I'm going to tell the nurses that um, my granddaughter's coming tomorrow and this is for her, it's not for me, it's for her and she's, I'm going to eat them myself. And all these stories, and, the, and, the, and then there was the old man who, he was he was a grump and he came out and he says, if you think I'm giving you my money, you know, like this, and he was like, you're not getting any money out of me, he was, he was the Grinch. And so, and that's fine, you kind of moved on, let's have a lovely day. And, and then after a while, he realized that everyone else was getting them for free. And it was the funniest thing, seeing him running down, well, not running, because he was in a walker, you know, getting himself down the thing, chasing the guys down and letting them know that he wanted his lollies. It was, it was so funny. But 
what came out of that was that there was a, an investment of self in the production of these gifts and then they were distributed around and people were talking to them and saying oh this is really nice thank you so much for this and they were making people stay you know like the the old lady who was sitting in the chair who really didn't interact with anybody she was one of those ones who was waiting to die um, but when our guys sat down and talked to her and, and they gave her this gift she smiled at them you know and she hadn't responded to anybody for a very long time these things added value to what they were doing and so um, the time came when um, when we went to go home and all the way home they were talking about the little bits because they had been off in different directions and they'd been talking to a lot of different people been distributing a lot of these things and it had a richness for them and it was a richness that lasted for some time so you know you would find the next couple of weeks after they were still talking about little snippets that they had remembered of things that had happened during their outing and the efforts that they had made and how proud they were of what they did and this is how we began to understand the value of thank you and that was our beginning just learning the value of thank you